Now, if you want a super easy way to change skies in your photos with Photoshop, look no further than the steps we're about to cover right now. The first thing that you need to do after you open your photo into Photoshop is to simply go up to edit and down here to sky replacement. What this does is it skips all the work of having to do manual selections and masking and instead automatically scans your photo and creates a selection of your sky to automatically fill a new sky within. In the window that appears, you can see how we have this new sky based on the sky preview and you can go ahead and change the sky to whatever you would like by clicking on this drop down arrow and choosing from your library here. Now, I already have some other ones imported, but you might not have that already. So what you can do to import more skies is to click on the gear icon and go to get more skies. If you already have some sky templates that you've taken with your camera elsewhere on your own time, you can go and just click import images to add those photos into this library of skies. Or you can go and download some free sky templates from Adobe by clicking on download free skies here. Either way, once you have your skies selected, you can click on them to change the sky in your photo, but for this particular image, I will select this sky. Once you have your sky chosen, you have a handful of sliders that you can edit to update the look of your new sky. Now, for the most part, you could just play around with these until you find something that works. However, I think there are a few settings that are worthwhile to remember, so I'm going to walk through some of those right now. The first is the shift edge adjustment, which is going to take your current mask of your sky that was automatically created and either move it in towards your original photo. So now the sky is covering more of the subject. Or if I go the opposite direction, it's going to reveal more of my original sky and less of the sky template. Now, the advantage to this is if the edges don't look quite right, you can refine your mask just with a slider. Now the fade edge slider also is really useful for updating your mask because it's going to either add blur or feather to the edge of your automatic selection, or it's going to make that edge a little bit more hard. So it depends what you need for your image. Again, just play around with these to find something that looks best for you. As for the sky adjustments, we can of course increase the brightness to blend it into this photo a little bit more. And for this image, I'll add a little bit of warmth with the temperature slider. The scale option will just make our sky more or less zoomed in, but we never want to go less than 100 because then you'll see the edges of your sky. Now, finally, we have the foreground adjustments, which will take some of the brightness and color values from our sky and apply some of those into our foreground to make the image feel cohesive. But the main thing that you need to worry about is the lighting mode, and generally we can leave this set to multiply. However, if you have a really bright edge that you're applying your sky against, I'd recommend trying the screen blending mode, but for the most part, multiply is going to be your best bet. Play around with these sliders as you would like, but once you're finished and happy with your adjustments here, we can go to our output settings and set this to new layers. You'll see why this is important in just a moment, but for now, I'll click OK. Because I had my output set to new layers, all of my layers are now visible within a group. So all of our slider adjustments were translated into these masks and clipping masks and adjustment layers and things that might feel a little confusing and overwhelming, but this just makes it super easy. Now, of course, I have a reflection in this case, and I need to make that reflection manually because this tool does not create reflections for us. Fortunately, it's super easy to create a reflection after this main bit of work is finished. To start, I'll click on the sky replacement group and duplicate it by pressing command or control J. Now within the sky replacement group copy, I'll right click on the sky layer mask and go to delete layer mask. This now creates an unobstructed view of our sky. And now I want to merge all of these adjustments into one. So I'll click on the sky replacement group copy, the one that we just duplicated, and I'll press command or control E to merge everything in that group into one single layer. Now to turn this into a reflection, we need to activate free transform by pressing command or control T, right clicking and going to flip vertical. Now I'm going to just click and drag in the middle of that layer to reposition the sky along the horizon and I'll right click once again while free transform is still active and go to perspective. This will allow me to click and drag from any corner anchor point and make the sky reflection look like it's sitting on a surface. 
So I'll do something like that and align it like so. Pressing done to commit to those changes, we now need to blend this into the underlying water. So while our reflection layer is selected, I'll go to the layer blending mode and set this down here to overlay. If this doesn't look very good for you, you can also try the multiply or screen blending modes, but in this case, I'm going to choose overlay. Now, zooming back into the photo by pressing command or control zero, you can see that we have some problems with the edge of the image. So we just need to mask that away using the brush tool and a layer mask. While that reflection layer is selected, I'll add a new layer mask to that layer. Select the brush tool by pressing B and set my foreground color to black. I'm just going to use a soft round brush and set my opacity to 100%. And while that reflection layer mask is selected, I can just paint over the edge of that layer to softly blend away that image. And finally, to make this look a little bit less intense, I'll just go to the opacity and bring this down like so until I'm happy with the result. Now you could take this further with other selections of your subject and things like that to further blend in this reflection, but this already looks pretty acceptable to me, so I'm happy with the result. However, one final, final step that you could do is add a Gaussian blur because nothing that is reflected in water is going to look perfectly sharp. So while our reflection layer is selected, we can go up to filter, blur, and then Gaussian blur. And zooming in just to get a closer look at the image, we can just adjust the radius to add some blur to that reflection depending on your tastes. So I'll do something like this and click OK. So now that completes the process, we have our reflection layer on top of everything. And below that, we have our sky replacement group, which is what we created within the sky replacement panel. Looking at our before and after, we can see how we have totally transformed the feel of this photo without having to do any complicated selections. And we just had to do some simple mask adjustments with our brush tool. Now, I know that we covered a lot of things in today's video, so if you want to remember everything that we talked about in one simple format, I created a PDF cheat sheet that you can access for free in the description below. It summarizes all the steps that we talked about here, as well as all of the settings that we discussed inside of the sky replacement panel. So if you want to get access to that free cheat sheet, it is in the description below. And with that, I'll see you back here next time.